What's up YouTube? This is Print Practical. This video is part two of the Ender 3 Pro build series. Today we're going to be going over setting up a Raspberry Pi to run Octoprint. And then later on in the video, we're going to tune this stock Ender 3 Pro. So first, let's go over what you need. So first thing we'll need is a Raspberry Pi. You need one that you're going to be able to connect to your local network, whether that's over Wi-Fi or Ethernet. Secondly, you're going to need an SD card for that Raspberry Pi. We're going to go on the computer next and load Octoprint on that. You also need some way of powering your Raspberry Pi. And lastly, you're going to need a USB to micro USB cable, uh, which will go from the Raspberry Pi to the printer. So let's hop over to the computer and I'll show you how to download Octoprint, how to put it on an SD card and hook it up to your printer. And then we should be good to go. So first we're going to flash the SD card. I'm going to use SD card formatter and I'm just going to do a quick format. Then head over to octoprint.org, go to download, download octopi 0.18.0 or whatever is the newest version. I already downloaded it, so I'm good to go. Okay, so I use Belina Etcher for flashing uh, Raspberry Pi images to SD cards. So I'm just going to select the image, my SD card, So I've never actually seen this fail before, but looking at the files on the jump drive, everything looks like it installed fine, so I'm going to ignore it. And we'll see if we run into any issues, but I don't think we will. As you can see, I already have an issue because I ran out of outlets underneath the disk, so I'm just going to plug in over here. The screen turns on. So actually the printer is receiving power through the USB port, which is probably not good, but the rest of the printer isn't on. I can turn it on um, and it's okay to use it in this way, but it would be nice if you could turn off your printer and the LCD would not stay on through the USB port. So I'm going to show you how to fix that. So I'm having a hard time getting this to focus, but I will put a diagram on the screen but the far right pin on the USB plug is for power. So we're gonna actually cut off a sliver of electrical tape and put it over that, and then we should be good. Okay, so there we go. We have our electrical tape in there. The two data pins are fine and ground is good. So let's plug the Pi back into the printer and see what happens. Perfect, so the screen's not on. Let's turn the printer on now. And now let's go check Octoprint to see if we can connect. A quick look at my router page and it shows that Octopi is at 192.168.0.198. Now let's open our web browser and go to the IP address. And we reach the start wizard. So we're gonna start. We don't have a backup. They want you to set up a username and password. You can do whatever you want here. And here's where you put in some printer profile items. So this is going to be an Ender 3 Pro. I believe it's 220 by 220 by 250. Uh, origin is lower left. It is rectangular. Heated bed. Okay, so we have our Octoprint set up. So let's try and connect to the printer. It connected successfully. And yep, it popped up a warning. Um, that the printer's firmware is bad. This is because this is a really old version of Marlin running on this printer. We'll solve this when we go to run a BL Touch on it. But for now, we're just gonna deal with it. Let's make sure that we can control the printer. So we'll go over to the control tab. Okay, let's try and move the Z axis up by 10. The X over by 10. 
and the Y up by 10. All right, so we have full control of the printer. I think we should start out by sending a test calibration cube to the printer via Octoprint and see how we make out. So for most of the calibration and tuning that we're gonna do, I'm gonna be using the Teaching Tech 3D printer calibration page as a reference, and I'm gonna grab their XYZ cube um, from Thingiverse. Okay, so 28 minutes. I'm going to save it to a file, and we can upload our calibration cube. And now I can click load and print, and this will The calibration cube finished. Let's give it some measurements here. 20 on the money, 20.06, that's still very good. 20.12, still pretty good. First, we're gonna do a PID auto tune which makes sure that the 3D printing nozzle is heating up and it's consistent. So to do that, we want to make sure that we're connected to our printer via Octoprint. We can go over to the terminal and this should be pretty simple. It's just an M303 command, extruder zero, and then the temperature that you most likely print at, which right now the filament that I have is 215 and then U1 telling it to store it to RAM. So let's send this command. Okay, so our PID auto-tune finished. So we wanna save this to EEPROM now, which you can do by using a M500 command. Teaching Tech recommends just using the extruder and not the hot end for E-step calibration. So I'm going to pull the filament out and then disconnect the Bowden tube. Okay, now that we removed the Bowden tube, I have my caliper set at 120 millimeters and I have a permanent marker. And I'm going to mark off 120 millimeters from the extrusion, the extruder hole. Okay, now that our filament is marked, we're going to follow the directions here. M92 figures out what our current E value is, which is 93. Now we want to do a G91, so to put everything in at, uh, relative movements instead of absolute movements. And now we are going to send 100 millimeters of filament at 50 millimeters a minute. Okay, now that that's done, I'm gonna to measure to my mark. We have 21.5 left. So I'm gonna go down to the calculator here. It already has my 93 value and we had 21.5 millimeters remaining. So that means that I need to change my new E steps to 94.42. So I'm going to use the M92 command. And then an M500 to save the EEPROM. And we're done our E-step tuning. All right, let's launch our calibration cube again from Octoprint. And we'll see how it turns out. Okay, caution, make sure you reboot your printer before you start another print. I made that mistake, and I'll put a time lapse here of what just happened, but it wasn't good. So both cubes pretty much came out the same which is kind of expected because there's nothing really modified about the hot end of this printer. So that's fine. At least we know we did all the sanity checks. And now next video, we can start with some more modifications. So that's it for this video. We set up Octoprint on a Raspberry Pi so that we can control our Ender 3 Pro wirelessly. Also, we did some basic tuning for E-steps and auto PID tuning. So next video, we're gonna do some common Ender 3 mods 
subscribe to the channel and stay tuned. Until next time.